Git has a bunch of different commands that you can use, both through the graphical interface and through the command line. This video will explain a few of the basic, but essential, functions for command line operation. These operations will be the exact same regardless of whether you're in a Windows computer, Mac, or using some sort of Linux distribution. Git is offline, local version control. Websites that utilize Git are online, remote version control. Anyone with project access can access the files you've uploaded and potentially contribute to your project. Using Git by itself, which is local version control, would be like typing up an essay on your computer. Only you and whoever else uses your computer has access to it, unless you email or post it somewhere. Using a website like GitHub, which is remote version control, is like using Google Docs to work on essays in a group. Every collaborator can work on the document at the same time while seeing every change that's being made and also having access to features like adding notes to different parts of the essay. Keep in mind, in this example, you can pick either way to write an essay. With Git and all those remote version control websites, you have to use them both. You will be using Git on your machine to send all of your changes over to GitHub or other websites. Git clone allows you to copy your project over to the specified directory of your machine. Think of this as downloading a project. You get the link from one of the websites like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and more. Once the command finishes running, you'll now have access to the project, which is also known as a repository. Now, we'll go through how you can publish your code to your branch. This is a two or three step process depending on how you do it. Git status will let you see every single file you've made changes to since you either last pulled or committed. This list will show up in red, which doesn't mean anything bad. It just means that those files have had changes made to them. This is also good if you forget what exactly you've been working on and want to check. Each repository has a .gitignore file, which will not track changes made to files listed in here. This is great for files that don't change a project much and just take up a lot of space, such as unused assets or npm packages. If you want to add or remove files from this list, you'll have to go to the gitignore file and modify it. Git add is going to be the first official step on publishing your changes, which is the start of a process referred to as staging. The first unofficial step in this process is to use git status to see all the files that have been changed. If you've been working on a lot of files and want to publish them all to your repository, you can specify which ones you want by using git add followed by the file path that you see in git status. You can include as many files as you want as long as you separate file names with the space, but you need one file minimum. If you want to add every file that shows up in git status, even if there's only one file, you can use git add period to add every file listed. After you finish using git add, you can use git status again to see if you have everything that you want staged for your commit. Now files will be listed green instead of red. This is one out of three steps required in order to publish or push code to your repository. The second part of this is to attach a message for the files you're uploading. Here, you should put a brief message that shows what you've changed, such as reformatted code, added a new screen, or fixed bug when user clicks in left area, messages kind of along those lines. Git commit will open up a text editor called Vim. If you don't know how to use Vim, this will be confusing at first. If you get stuck in this, hit escape and then type colon and then Q exclamation mark to quit. Worst case, you can just hit control Z or control C and you should also exit. Git commit -m will let Git know that you're going to supply it with a commit message without opening a vim. The dash -m here in this case is for message. The message you type has to be within a set of opening and closing double quotation marks. Now, here's an operation that kind of combines these past two steps and makes the process a little bit easier. This new command combines both git add period, which adds every file that shows up in git status, and git commit dash m with your message. This will add every single file from git status to your commit, as well as the message that you type. Once you finish your commit message, you have to let git know that you want to publish or push it to your repository. In order to do this, you use git push to upload it there. 
Now, if you check, your changes will be there. The commit process can be confusing at first, but think of it like this. Git add, if you use it, is like selecting attachments you want to add to an email. Git commit is like adding a short message in the email about the attachments. Git push is like pressing send on the email. Think of branches as different save files in video games. If you're playing a game that you're sharing with others, you don't want them to affect your save file. You start off by selecting the source branch that you want to make a copy of and create a branch from it. Git checkout, after you create a branch, allows you to switch into another branch in the project repository. This is useful for checking out different versions and parts of the codebase that you're working on. While developing, everyone working in the same branch, such as the master branch, can get messy. A good workflow to help organization and productivity, in my opinion, is to create a branch for a specific small feature that you're going to work on. This is known as a feature-based branch. Commit should be for smaller changes that help you complete the feature you're working on, and should only be pushed when your code is working. This makes it easy to go back or revert to an earlier version in case something goes wrong in the project. You can also use git checkout to go to an earlier version of your project, but this can get really complex in some cases. Google can direct you to some great resources for this if you're interested. Merging means to get what one person has and combine it with something else. This is great for adding features to any sort of program, especially if you have a team of people that are all working on different components. This is done with something called a pull request, which I use the earlier mentioned websites for doing. It will let the repository owner know that you want to change your code in some way, and it has to be checked out and approved in order to get added. This can get messy when multiple people are working on the same file, as this creates something called a merge conflict. I recommend using IDEs such as IntelliJ or VS Code's Git integration to solve these. If everyone works in the same branch, it is very easy for people to have their work get lost or unknowingly overwritten by others. The best solution for this is to create different branches when working on some sort of change. Keep one branch that everyone will merge into, such as the master branch that's there by default. Once a merge request has been resolved, delete the source branch that got merged and pull from master or wherever the destination branch was. Create a new branch from your desired destination before developing again. If everyone involved is working on different files, however, merging won't cause any merge conflicts. Everyone involved can develop independently without having to wait for one person to completely finish what they have to do. One thing to note is that git pull is different from a pull request. Git pull will download any sort of new changes, both additions and removals, made to the project. Be careful when using this though. Pull is going to override everything that you're working on with the version that's in the branch that you're in. Don't pull while you're actively working on something. Only use pull if you check out into a different, recently updated branch, or after you either commit, stash, or remove your changes. An important thing to note is that even if you make a change on a website that utilizes Git, such as adding or removing a branch or merging branches together, you still have to use git pull again after you make those changes in order to get those changes. Git and any of those websites are two completely separate tools. Nothing will be updated automatically between the two. If you're in the middle of developing and want to try out a change that someone else has recently made, or if you want to create a new branch for the code that you're working on, git stash is going to get all of your changes since your last commit and store them. Think of this as some sort of quick save. It's not quite the same as a regular save, but it'll temporarily allow you to check out another branch. It will add these changes into the top of a stack for you to later access. When you're done checking out other code and want to access your stash changes, you can use git stash apply after going into your branch to apply the last change that you stashed. Double check that you're in the branch you want to work in before doing this. This will not delete what you have stashed. 
It'll just apply the most recently stashed item and keep it there. After you're done with the code you stashed, you should use git stash clear to remove it. Even though git stash clear technically removes everything in the entire stack, it still works in this case. If you don't use this command, the stack will grow taller and taller. You can view this stack with git stash list. Or, as an alternative to git stash apply and then using git stash clear, you can simply use git stash pop. Since this works as a stack, this pop is going to apply the most recent change and then delete it, essentially combining those two commands into just one. If you've been working on changes that don't really work and you want to remove them all back to the last version you have on your branch, you can use git reset dash dash hard to go to the last official version of the branch that's available. Keep in mind, this will reset every file you've changed to what is there from your last commit, so be cautious. An example of how I mostly use git when coding would be to either use git clone or git pull, depending on if I'm starting a project or wanting to receive new changes that were made. If I don't already have my own branch for the general tasks that I'm working on, I'll make one that will stem from the most recently updated working branch, and then use git pull to receive this newly created branch. I'll then use git checkout to switch to it and then start programming. Once I'm ready to start staging and making my code available for others, I'll use git status to check the files I've changed. Then, I would use git add with specific files or git commit am if I want to add everything listed. I would then add a short, but objective, message on what I was working on, making sure that it's chipping away at the overall task that my branch was created for. Once that command finishes, I would use git push to make it available remotely. If I believe that my objective for my branch is complete, I would then submit a pull request through GitHub or other websites, putting my branch as a source branch and master as my destination branch. Once this pull request gets reviewed and approved by at least one other person, it will be merged into the destination branch, which I'll use git checkout to go back to. I'll then start the cycle again by creating a branch for master and using git pull to receive all these new changes, receiving the new branch, and also deleting the now non-existent branch that was merged into master. Even if you're working on a project by yourself, I'd still recommend using git and creating pull requests to move your changes to your master branch. I'd also recommend still having at least two branches, one that you'll create and delete each time for specific features, and one master branch that other branches will merge into once their code is working. This is only an introduction of what I feel are essential Git functions every developer or computer science slash software engineering student should know. If you want to read more about the many other things you can do with Git, I'd recommend checking out their official documentation with the link in the description. Thank you for watching.